Hi, in this video I'm talking about one of my very favorite things to talk about in the whole world and that is exercise. So I love exercise so much that in the 1980s I got some Jane Fonda tapes and I started doing these aerobics videos in my basement and I became certified in um, fitness instruction and personal training in the early 90s. I had leotards and leg warmers and I just love exercise. So um, I wanted to talk about that because what I find in my practice is that most people don't like exercise and they want to know what is the bare minimum I need to get away with? What does it need to look like? They don't know whether they need to join CrossFit or run a marathon or they, they don't know what to do. And so I have broken it down and I found over the decades of, of doing this that there are really four ways that you need to move your body and four types of things you need to do around exercise that make your program well-rounded. Number one, you need to move. Frequently, we're not made to sit all day, every day in a sedentary world, but we do that. So one of my favorite little tricks around that is I got a Fitbit charge. And Aura Rings are another way to do this, Fitbits, Apple Watches, a gadget of some sort. And it counts your steps. Mine, I set it up to beep. If I don't have 250 steps in an hour, it sends me a little message and I just, I'm here at my office right now and I can go walk around the parking lot. I can't, if I'm at home, I can walk around the block or I can get out my mini trampoline and rebound and get some steps that way and just move my body every hour. I try to fill, there's this little circle. I try to fill it up with movement every hour. Do I get it? Nope, not always, but it's something that I try to do. So moving often. A good goal is to get 10,000 steps a day. Um, if you're not there, don't sweat. Just set, you know, maybe it's 4,000, then 5, then 7, then 9 and 10. Whatever it is, work up to, to that. That takes me some intentionality around it. So um, a lot of days I will take a walk in the morning or go for an easy jog or something like that. And what that does is it gets me steps and it's just kind of this low level movement that it's not really hard exercise, but it builds a foundation of endurance and things like that. In, in fact, about two or three times a week, I try to even go an hour or longer with a walk and an easy jog. I love to run on the trails. So I go out there and sort of hike, jog for an hour or two, once a week, um, twice a week, something like that. So that's kind of secret number one, move your body with low level motion all the time throughout the day. Number two is you need to go hard and fast and get your heart rate up. So for most people, that looks like some kind of an interval um, where you, um, a, a sort of a classic is something called a peak eight workout. And you can do it with weight training, you can do it with walking, running, the bike, the elliptical, the rowing machine, whatever it is, the, the premise is the same. You do about 10 minutes of gentle um, activity, whatever that is, walking, running, um, you, you do it gently and easily and get warmed up. And then you go 30 minutes as hard as you can go. And then you back off for 90 seconds. If I said 30 minutes, I meant 30 seconds. <laughs> 30 seconds, a 30 second interval as hard as you can go. And then you back off and recover for 90 seconds. So sometimes I go to the track and I, you know, sprint for 30 seconds and then walk for 90 seconds or jog easy. Um, I, I do this on my treadmill. I do it on my stationary bike. I, whatever is available to you, use that. Um, you do that, you repeat that sequence eight times. That's why it's called peak eight. And then you cool down for a few minutes and you round it out to about 30 minutes um, for that activity. You should break a sweat. Your heart rate should go up. It's good. Um, it, but it doesn't have to be that formal. In fact, if you want to just, um, there's a, a term for it in running called fartlek or speed play where you, you're just out jogging and then all of a sudden you see, I'm going to sprint to that mailbox and you do that and then you walk for a while till you catch your breath and then you sprint to this tree or somebody's fence or whatever it is. Um, my point is it doesn't have to be rocket science and it doesn't have to be a perfect 30 seconds on, 90 seconds off. The idea is to get out of breath, break a sweat, get your heart rate up, and then recover and do it again. And you need to do this kind of activity 
one to two times a week. The older you are, the less you can tolerate this. So typically someone hits their 50s or so and one time a week of intervals is enough. But if you're younger than that, you, you should be able to tolerate a session like this once or once or probably even twice a week. So at least one time a week, get that heart rate up, sprint, dust the cobwebs off, make sure you're going hard and fast. Number three is that you need to lift heavy things. And this is for women too. These little two, three pound weights, they're okay, but you really need to um, stress the body out enough to make a change. Um, this is super important once we get over 30 because that's when our we start to lose muscle mass and every year we lose a little bit more. And it's really important for ladies in that menopausal, premenopausal age range. So 40s, 50s, and beyond because we start to lose muscle mass, we start to lose bone density, and this is a really good way that we can stop that from happening. If you couple that with the hormonal changes that we see when we hit, you know, the big change of life, so to speak, then it, it just makes it worse. So um, that's really important. In the weight loss world, lifting heavy weights is key. There's a whole bunch of things that happen that don't happen when you do cardio and stretch and take yoga classes and do Pilates. It, 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 the growth hormone increases, your metabolism increases. So two to three times a week you need to focus on using the whole body in strength work. You need to squat, you need to lunge, you need to push, pull, swing a kettlebell, roll an ab wheel, do some planks, focus on the core, all of those kinds of things, two to three times a week. And then the, the last piece of the puzzle is mobility, maintaining good range of motion and flexibility. Again, as we get older, that starts to fall apart. And if you're sensing a theme, that's because it is. <laughs> as, as we get older, all these things are like use it or lose it. And as a kid, we're always moving and running and lifting heavy things. It's just sort of natural, at least it used to be. And for most kids, it still is. But as we get older, we tend to sit in an office or sit in front of the TV or sit in front of our phones or whatever. And we're not out there running and as fast as we can and chasing our friends and lifting heavy things. Oh, who can pick up that? And like all this stuff just, we, we need to put some intention into it. Um, mobility work can look like um, dynamic movement. It can look like a yoga class. It can look like some stretching. And most of the time, this mobility stuff happens either at the beginning of a workout or at the end as either a warm up or a cool down. That's how my husband and I do it and and we've been doing this a long time so that's kind of a, a good rhythm to get into is using mobility as a warm-up or a cool down um, you need to do that almost every day so think five days a week or more on mobility to, it'll take you about 10 or 15 minutes and um, in the on, on my blog drjenny.com slash blog this, this post has some links to some routines that we created. My husband has a dynamic flexibility and I have a 10 minute yoga sequence that should stretch and mobilize the whole body. So anyway, I hope that sort of gets you thinking about, okay, exercise, it doesn't have to be this complicated. There's four ways to nail a good exercise program and there's all those things we talked about you can also um, check out my gut health, or I'm sorry, my joint health packs. I created a set of supplements that are designed to support healthy movement and healthy joints and things like that. So if you're active and you're thinking, okay, you know, how do I make sure that I'm getting all the nutrients I need for that? That I, I created that especially for that. It, it's, they're, they're great. They're in a little convenient, easy to take packs. And then if you have a question that you want to specifically connect with me or someone on my team to get a little more individualized help, we'll be glad to help you with that too. Um, so anyway, that's how my team and I can help. And um, I thank you for watching and I look forward to talking with you soon.